Allah Ta'ala he mentions in the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu ajtanibu kathiran min al-dhanni inna ba'd al-dhanni ithmun wa la tajassasu wa la yagta ba'dukum ba'dah ayyuhibbu ahadukum an ya'kula lahma akhihi maytan fakarihtumu Allah Ta'ala in Surah Hujrat ayat number 12 he mentions that O oh believers abstain abstain from what? kathiran min al-dhan abstain from suspicion suspicion, shak, doubt about other people Abstain from suspicion. Inna ba'd al-dhanni ithm. Because some suspicion is sin. Wala tajassas one. Don't spy. Meaning don't look for faults of one another. And don't make ghibat of one another. Okay. Ghibat we covered on in a particular many, many months ago. So what I want to talk about specifically is this thing which is called a dhan. Suspicion which we refer to in the English language. And now first and foremost understand one thing is that Islam, the sharia, Quran, Hadith, it, it encourages us to do those things and those sifat which create unity. And those things which create disunity are haram and impermissible. Why is ghibat impermissible? It creates ikhtilaf between two people. Why is dhan haram? Dhan, suspicion. It creates enmity between two people. Why is hasad haram? It creates enmity. Takabbur and so on. These are things which can create enmity and issues between two particular individuals. Hence in our deen, these things are impermissible. The Quran Kareem also mentions the ideal. The ideal is Wakunu ibad Allahi ikhwana. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran to become like brothers. Wakunu ibad Allahi ikhwana, become brothers. So the ideal of the Quran is that all Muslims be brothers. Anything that can stop that brotherhood is haram. Chahe, wherever you're from, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Korea, South America, North America, this is absolutely irrelevant. Irrelevant. Because you say, La ilaha illallah, now you're brothers. Anything that can bring that brotherhood down is haram in Islam. Absolutely haram in Islam. So we have an issue, for example, one of the things which can create that issue within our community is dhan, is suspicion, is negative thinking about the other individual. What is dhan, first of all? Like I said, translated refers to as a suspicion. Suspicion basically means, right, imagination of anything to be the case. Imagination of anything to be the case or for something to be likely. Or another one is, it's a vague notion of something. A vague notion of something is suspicion. So I think this may be a possibility. And that person is doing X, Y, and Z possibly because of this. They're doing that because of this reason. This is referred to as dhan. Because you're not sure, it's vague. And again, you think it might be possible. You think it might be in existence. So what happens is there's two types of dhan, right? There's two types. One is deliberate. And one is, uh, one is uh, which is spontaneous. Deliberate, obviously, I can think about, example, I can think of somebody and I'm deliberately thinking about them in a negative way. I'm thinking of them suspiciously. That's deliberate. And one is spontaneous. Okay? A chanak, a thought comes to mind. We'll cover the spontaneous bit afterwards, inshallah. But I want to mention something in regards to thinking about people negatively. It's something wrong in Islam. First of all, our first qadam is what? So understanding that when we think about another Muslim brother, another individual with suspicion, deliberately, then Allah Ta'ala forgive, but we are, we are doing a major, major guna. We're doing something which is wrong. Even if we hear something about somebody, let's just say somebody tells you something. For example, somebody says to you, that brother, he does this. For example, he's an alcoholic. Okay, I've heard what you have to say. Firstly, there was no reason why you had to tell me. So that can be ghibat as well. So we should say, brother, I don't know what the case is. So please, only Allah knows best. But what can happen is the thought can linger in your mind. Is he an alcoholic? Is he like this? That's deliberate. You're thinking about this. You're deliberately thinking about that individual. Now, when a person assumes... Okay, that is the case. is an alcoholic. You've made up your mind. You've basically taken suspicion and made it into yaqeen. That's the problem. And that's what happens in our cultures. And I mean, there's so many examples, right? Look, in, look I'll give you an example in UK what happened. I don't know if you guys were aware. Did anyone aware of the Trojan horse plot? Did that ring a bell? The Trojan horse. Okay, if it doesn't, don't worry. But I'll tell you what happened was. There was this scandal that there was apparently, it's, it's all, it was all nonsense that there was a Muslim takeover in a school hardliners, fanatics that they're trying to take over the, 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 the governance of the school and so on 
It turned out it was a big hoax. It was a big hoax. But what happened was, based on a letter that got sent by who, by who, we don't know anything much more than that. It created this hysteria. Everyone started freaking out. Okay, Muslims are planning a takeover of the school. So what happened was Ofsted and all these things, agencies started getting involved. It created a massive panic. Every newspaper was running with, with Trojan horse, Trojan horse, Trojan horse, Trojan horse. Muslims were under scrutiny to think this is what these people are doing. You come in this country and then you want to take over. That was the news that was kind of getting pushed out by the far right. After what happened was, oh, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. It was a hoax. Oh, lucky bundle. The hysteria and the panic you created, people are freaking out, saying Muslim this, they're trying to take over this. You've created this mass, this pandemonium everywhere, and people are now freaking out to just say, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. So in Islam, this is why responsible coverage of media is also one of the things of Islam. We responsibly, don't just send afwa. Okay, I think this, I think this, based on the suspicion. We don't know for sure. Innocent until proven guilty is a concept within Islam as well. Okay, and even when you do send it to others, there should be a reason for Islam. Logo ko bachana, to help people. So for example, if I know that, I, I, I know that this, this person's shar cannot affect these people, I don't need to disclose to them what this person does. But for example, if somebody I know is a complete fraudster and he's saying to these people, look, brother, let's do some business here. We do some business. And I'm saying, brother, look, just a word of caution, a word of caution. You've asked me about this brother. So my hak is to tell you the truth that there's been an incident with this person in the past. Khalas. I don't need to say he did a, a, a business with Flana Mia and he jacked him of 20 grand. He closed one of his curry shops down and then he moved up to somebody else. And then he went to East London, did another one there. Then went some... Right, we don't need to say all that. All I need to say, you came to me. I have a hug to tell you the truth. But again, what a person should always think is that we should always give people the benefit of the doubt. Always. Understand that there's a possibility, but always give people the benefit of the doubt. Then when it becomes haram is when a person makes yaqeen. When you hear something and you make yaqeen that that's exactly what they are like. That's exactly what he or she is like. Same what happened with this Trojan horse thing. It got out, taken out of context. People started thinking Muslims are taking over. And then they did retract. They didn't send an apology. But you know where it was? Later pages. Third, fourth page, somewhere a little comma. Oh, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. Bruv, the, the panic you created, the people aren't going to forget the panic. Because it was going one run time, one time, LBC, all news. Yard, where is the responsibility of sending proper information out? And then people want to say Muslims are quite uptight when it comes to media. Because it is shown that it can't be trusted all the time. So naturally we're going to be skeptical at certain times. So this is one thing about Islam. So imagine the harms it can have. That, that's what can happen on a big scale. But on a smaller scale, we can do it. We can ostracize people from our communities and so on. If we see people doing wrong, we should always think something else. We should always think good until proven otherwise. Or maybe that's something, there's an explanation for that. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a simple example. Someone you see walking out of a pub. You don't know why they've been in there. You don't know any reason. But you haven't been bothered to ask them. Not that you have a God-given right to ask them, but just supposedly, you don't know why they came out. It's possible. There's 101 reasons. The brother, the brother needed to go to the toilet. He was desperate. He needed to go. That was the closest place. You know, that could be a reason. It could be where, for example, that uh, he works in a certain thing. He had to drop something off, which was non-alcohol related or something halal. I don't know. Let's, I'm not, I don't know what gets sold too much there, but as example, I'm just saying there could be a number of one, 101 things. It could be anything. Okay, my point of mentioning is this. If you, you don't know for sure why that individual did that thing, it would be wrong to say, oh, oh, I saw such and such a person coming out of a pub. What was he doing in the pub? Because when you tell next person, he doesn't say, oh, I heard such and such a person went in the pub. A such and such person said, oh, such and such a person was spending time in the pub. Fourth person is going to say, oh, such and such a person was jamming it in the pub. Fifth, sixth, seventh, someone's going to say, Ji, oh, pub is gaya to He went in the pub and he was drunk. It will, Chinese whisper will eventually get to that stage. 
So this is why, my dear brothers, we have to be very careful that suspicions are very, it's a, it's a negative thing, but it's to act on that suspicion which is even worse. Now look, Islam doesn't mean that we should be gullible. We're not gullible people. Jalilog. We're not gullible people, right? But it means is that, for example, <clears throat> if, I'm doing, if I'm doing business with somebody, we will do everything transparent, do everything clear-cut. You know, like some people, they get into business and they say, we'll, we'll manage it. No, no, not manage it. Fix it. Write things down. Quran talks about that. When two people are doing a business, Write things down, be clear, be transparent, so you know who's taking what. And this happens in family businesses. We'll just say, no, we're brothers, we'll work it out. We'll work it out, we're brothers. We don't talk about money amongst family. That's nonsense. Why? Because when something hits the fan, you're going to say, I want my 20 grand share. Abari Malik again. Father gave it to me, not you. So then it becomes messy after a while, when you're too entangled. So what the Quran says, is that when two people are contracting an agreement, then write things down. Surah Baqarah verses, towards the ending of the verses, it mentions this. Okay, so write things down. And then le- le- have things transparent. Have things completely clear cut. So we know that what is what, whose is what. So for example, five people are running a business, one person works three days a week, the other person, people are working seven. Is it fair that that person who works three days takes this chair? Hey, I want £700 a week, I'm only working three days, so you're working... We're going to get the same wage. No, no, hold on a second. It doesn't work that way. We need to agree beforehand. We need to agree to disagree, but we need to come to a common agreement. By there's nothing wrong with this. Okay? This is Islam. Okay? Because Allah knew your fitrah. You can't say, oh, he's my dad, or he's my brother, or if it's embarrassing. We don't talk about money. Well, I'll tell you an issue which came to me. One brother came, and I'll, again, I have to be very careful who I say, what I say, where they are. Just some brothers, okay? One brother came to me, and he received a 15,000 pound bill. Okay, because the three brothers have a business, family business, and the bill came to him. So his other brother, other brother said to him, well, the bill came to you, right? So you pay it. It's in your name. You pay the bill. So he asked me, what should I do? I said, was the bill your own personal bill or was it business related? He said it was business related. One other brother received a thousand pound, two thousand pound. I received the 15 grand bill. I said, well, then what's your agreement mutually? He said, our mutual agreement is you just pay whatever bills come your way. So why did you make such a stupid agreement in the first place? Because naturally now you're kicking off because yours is 15, they got 10 or uh, 2. 1 and 2, you got 15. So combine their money, they're spending 3 grand, you're spending 15. Where's the insaf in that? But in the family members, we don't talk about money. Well, you're clearly you're talking about money now, ain't you? So what did the Quran say? When you transact, write things down. Make things clear, document things. Even when you're in traveling, you know, there's even rules in relation to that as well. Khair, anyway, like I said, these are suspicion is going far, but like I said, I want, we've got a few minutes left so we can carry on. We're not gullible people. We're not gullible. When you get into business with people, you, you obviously, you, you, you know, tie up all the loose ends, make sure everything is transparent, and you, there's an element of trust. But if you know in advance, someone's already told you that, brother, be careful of this guy, yeah, he's a bit hanky-panky guy, you know what I mean, he takes the mick a bit. So you won't, in your mind, the right thing is, put it at the back of your mind, you don't entertain the thought, but it's there that you know that someone told you this thing, okay? So but that also, you don't make yaqeen in your mind that this guy is a fraudster. I need to beat him before he beats me. Now that's a dog-eat-dog world, the world can't operate on that basis. But what happens is, what we're taught is that this much we should do, put it at the back of your head, transact clearly, and let not any discrepancy come involved. That's it. But we shouldn't make yaqeen that this person is like this based on what someone else told me. Until I don't experience that person for myself, I should not make my own decision. Does that make sense? It's a very thin line between the two. The difference between the two is, one, you told me something about him and I say, right, he's like that because you told me. That's one, that's haram. And one thing is, you told me, I say, okay, possibly, but I, I'm going to leave it there. And then I transact and deal with the brother and then I come to my own conclusion. That's different. So what one is, is that where someone tells you something, you say, bro, you see my man, yeah, he's like this. So then you immediately make up your mind, yeah, well, this is how the brother is. My man's a fraud star, he's like this, and it's wrong. And unfortunately, why I say this, I'm giving you the example of business because you guys are involved in business. But I'll tell you how it does happen. It happens with family members. And it happens a hell of a lot, which I saw abroad in my particular family as well, wider family. And I've seen it with other people who bring complaints to me. Because what happens is... Two people have an ikhtilaf over something, and one person says, this is what they were trying to do. They were trying to do this to me. The brother says, I I don't know what they're talking about. I I really don't know what they're talking about. I'm innocent. They're thinking that in their head. 
Was there any evidence to why you thought that person was doing that to you? No, such and such a person told me that they're like that. Ah, so someone pumped your ear with something, you made yaqeen, you fell into the same trap which Allah said don't do. And you see what it created? Because when you build up this dhan in your heart, you're going to treat your next brother now with negativity. You're going to always treat them as someone possibly that might be a bit hit up hitty, a bit left and right. Okay, so this is why it is an issue. It plays out in a lot of areas of our life. Muslims, we don't do that. Why shouldn't we do that? Because Allah called towards kunu ibadallahi ikhwana, become brothers. And anything that can be a harm to you being brothers becomes haram in Islam. Basically, right, there are some types of dhan, suspicion, which are absolutely haram in Islam. Number one is for you to think negatively about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Negatively. Allah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Quran. For example, someone knows Allah, says something along the lines of like, Allah did this, Allah is wrong. I shouldn't have to go through this. Why is Allah punishing me? Why is Allah doing this? Thinking negatively of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen, my brother. Allah is alim and hakim. You don't know the extent of Allah's rahmah, his mercy. Why you got to think negatively for? And subhanallah, realistically, realistically, analyze our lives. What do I do that I am so deserving of Allah's mercy that everything I do, I should be expecting to get a gold ticket for everything? Realistically, what do I do? Allah, Allah sometimes tests us to make us realize certain things, but we shouldn't ex- think bad, suspicious about Allah. Okay, Allah is, is wrong or He's punishing me or I'm, you know, something along the likes. If it's fard to, it's, it's, if it's haram to do that, then it's fard and compulsory to think good. Do you guys understand the difference? If it's haram to think negatively, then it's fard to have a good one, a good, a good thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, good thoughts, good hopes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a hadith mentions, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I treat my slave according to how he expects from me. This is an authentic hadith. I treat my slave according to his expectation from me. What do we, what do, we do that we deserve the rahmah of Allah? Aliyazu billah, look at our lives. Morning, noon, and night, what do we do? How much really, look, take away our lota and take away our halal meat. How much really Muslim have we got in our lives? Analyze. What do I do? <coughs> What, what have I got that can quantify me to be a Muslim? What, the tasbih hanging in my car? The bismillah sticker on the door? The odd occasional Eid? The odd occasional Jumu'ah? Now this is, I'm not trying to, you know what I mean? But I'm trying to make us think a little bit. And then for me to de- demand, I expect Allah to do, I shouldn't have no problems. Why did this happen? Brother, do you know, if you, walk, if you walked on the road, and even a, a shulka, a thorn even pricked you, did you know that that is a means of your sins getting forgiven? So any difficulty which comes your way, Allah's looking to forgive your sins. Why not look at it as a rahmah? Okay, I want to save my banda from the fire of Jahannam. I want to save him from azab. Have a small bit of problem because he's not making tawbah. To have a little difficulty, that excuse, Allah then can forgive your sins. Why not think positively about about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What does Allah get out of punishing you? What does He get? Anyway, finishing off. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hadith Bukhari, and according to the international standards, 5269, so you can check the reference afterwards. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, Inna Allah tajawaza an ummati ma haddathat bihi anfusuha ma lam ta'amal aw tatakallam. Allah will forgive generally any thought which comes to your mind so long as you don't do how many things? Two things. Whatever thoughts come, they're forgiven. If you talk about it, that's not forgiven. Or you make amal on it, that's not forgiven. So you have a thought, a negative thought. Aliyahu billah, and you start sharing it with your next man. I want to do this. I have a thought to this. I've got this thought. And it's a wrong one. It's a guna one. But stop it. You've just earned guna. You've earned sin. You spoke about it. And amal and practice is again, you actually go and physically do that thing. But when a thought comes in your mind about another Muslim brother, how do you take it to that stage? Because you start thinking about it. You are the one that thinks about it, right? No one can force the thoughts in your mind. Achanak spontaneous it can come. Like I said, spontaneous thoughts are what? In Allah tajawaza an ummati. They're forgiven by Allah. But if you start entertaining the thought, aha, or oh, eho jabanda, he's like this. Oh man, my man's a fraudster. He's an alcoholic. I heard he was like this. He must be like this. You've done it yourself. Then it becomes a sin because we should never have a negative thought about a fellow Muslim brother. Because what will happen is when you do meet that person, you'll meet them with a bit of negativity. You'll always meet them with a bit of suspicion. That's not how a Muslim should react with another Muslim. And finishing off, if you really want to know the ilaj, the cure for this, there's a few, five things inshallah which we can do. Understand firstly, this condition comes from kibr and pride. If I think of myself better than another person, I'm going to look for faults for others. 
ऐसे ही ना ये सब कि अगर हम अपने आप को दूसरों के ऐसे अच्छा समझे वे कैन थिंक नेगेटिवली ऑफ पीपल बिकॉज़ आई लुक एट माय ओन खूबी एंड खैर सो नंबर 1 अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज एन इशू ऑफ किबर इट्स एन इशू ऑफ प्राइड दैट कैन डेवलप दिस हाउ टू गेट इलाज फ्रॉम दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इज टू टेक आउट सम टाइम ऑन पंडा कि अस्तगफिरुल्लाह दिस इज अ हराम आई शुडंट बी थिंकिंग अबाउट फेलो पीपल लाइक दिस एंड डेफिनेटली नॉट एनीवन हुज हुज मुस्लिम ब्रदर So this is a haram and by me doing a haram I'm going to uh, I'm going to earn the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number 1, okay Allah doesn't like it. So let me stop. That's the first step for Islam. Secondly, if I continue, if I continue to do this, I'm going to be deserving of Allah's azab maybe in this dunya but definitely in the akhirah. A person should think this. If you want to, if you want to free yourself up from this sin, that's how you're going to have to do it. And number 3 in addition to that, ponder over your own shortcomings. Get okay, okay. This guy does this sin. What do I do? What don't I do? Okay, he's got a bit of a habit with Jada where he does a certain sin. He, he maybe he what he does something. What do I do? If people knew what your IP address had, Allahu Akbar. Maybe people would stop giving salam to you. Do you know what an IP address is? Yeah, you know when you go on the phone and you type in something on the internet that comes to your IP address. Agar logo ko pata chal jaye ki hum kya kya type kar rahe hain aur Hazrat kya dekh rahe hain, shayad salam hi na kare. Okay, but this person is not worthy of being given salam to. Alhamdulillah, because our our amal is such when we're walking in the streets, how we're we using our eyes. Here, mashallah, everyone can be pious. Everyone, mashallah, is sheikh. Alhamdulillah, Sufi. Go outside. Then we see the iman. Do, go, go out, go out and deal with the people, the customers, the public. Then we see the iman. Because why now? Money is at stake. No one can watch us. This is why I said, don't judge it here. Judge it outside. So we should ponder ourselves. Okay, where am I? Who am I? What am I doing? Judge yourself according to that. Fourth thing, make dua for Islam. Ke hey Allah, I've got this problem. Help me, please. I generally do this. Forgive me. Forgive my shortcomings. Five, make dua for that person. So that was five particular things. Ponder of it being haram. You can get the azab of Allah. Your own shortcomings. Dua for yourself. Dua for them. If you don't catch it, inshallah, catch the recording afterwards. Allah give us tawfiq to make amal and practice. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Kanashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfir wa tubalik.